and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to talk about the copy CSS function in Photoshop. So this is going to be sort of a Photoshop meets web design kind of mashup. Before we jump into it, and we're going to try to keep it pretty short. I have a course for sale over on tutvid.com about advanced Photoshop features. It's a cool little course. If you go pick one up, there's a link here on the screen right now. If you go pick up a copy, it just helps support tutvid.com, and that's super cool. I appreciate it. Uh, so are you scared of web design? Well, uh, don't be a chicken. Ha 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 ha. I just needed an image for this tutorial. That's the only reason I have this. I'm going to go ahead and fill this with white, and we're going to build ourselves a little button here. So I'm just going to click once, and I'm going to make my button 350 pixels wide by 125 pixels tall. We're going to set the corner radius. Radii, radii, uh, whatever, to 20 pixels. Apparently, I'm educated. It okay. And we have our rounded rectangle. Now, I'm going to select this little uh, thumbnail here, and I'm going to choose to fill it with a green. Great. I can close my properties panel. I'm going to zoom in on this uh, button up here. I'm going to grab my text tool, and I'm going to type out the words, follow me. I'm going to commit the change. We can't see it because the text is white. So I'll grab the move tool and I'll just drag it down here onto our button. It's going to snap to the middle. Great. Let's select the rounded rectangle layer and go layer, layer style, drop shadow. We're going to throw just a quick drop shadow underneath this. Set the angle to 90 degrees. We're going to set the size to zero and we're going to set the fill color to, I'm going to sample that green, but I'm going to make it a little bit darker. Uh, green, something like that, and the opacity should just be 100% straight up. So there we go, we've got a nice little sort of, I don't know, almost 3D-esque looking button. We could add all kinds of other layer styles and stuff, but let's just keep this simple. Uh, let's not make things too complex. Now, there are a few things we can do. We can right click on any given layer and just choose copy CSS. We can also go layer, copy CSS, and what that's going to do is it's going to copy the CSS styles that would build the shape or whatever you have on that layer to the best of Photoshop's ability. There's something else we can do though. If we select, let's say, these two layers because we want to create a button and we group them, Commander Control G, we can right click on a layer group and choose to copy the CSS of that layer group. Let's do that. I'm going to copy that CSS. Now I'm going to jump over to Adobe Dreamweaver where I'm going to go File, New, and I'm going to create a new HTML5 document, right? HTML5. Go ahead and create that. Now, H uh, Dreamweaver is not really my go to HTML editor of choice because it's big and clunky, but we're not going to complain about that here. Uh, before I get to the end head tag here, I'm going to hit enter return a couple times and I'm going to type an opening style tag and uh, down below that a closing style tag. Now within style, I'm just going to hit command or control V to paste the CSS that I copied from Photoshop. So if you don't know anything about CSS, uh, for now we can ignore group one. This is the CSS essentially that's sort of the global CSS uh, for the two layers that would have been within that group one layer. Um, just don't even, just do, seriously, don't even think about that. If you don't know how CSS works, that's just going to make things way too complicated. I'm going to go down here in between body, in between these two body tags, because what we need to do is we need to build a piece of text that corresponds to follow me and then attach the name follow me to it so all these styles get applied to that text. And we need to create just a, an empty box so we can apply all these styles to our empty box. Let's begin with the empty box. So here in between the opening and closing body tags, we're going to type uh, open div tag class equals open and close quotes. And then within the quotes, I'm just going to copy this uh, Get a highlight. Well, if I if I can stop right clicking, that is, I am going to copy rounded rectangle underscore one. Copy that. And I'm going to paste it within my uh, quotes there. All right. I'm going to do my closed angle bracket and then create a closing div tag. All right. I'm going to save this document here to my desktop. I'm going to save it as nope.html. Go ahead and hit save. And then we can go file. Preview in browser, preview this in Google Chrome, and check it out. We get a button, but it's way off center. Why is it way off center? Well. And actually, let me just make sure I pull this all the way up into, into screen so you guys can see what's going on here. Why is the button way off center? Well, if we go back to Photoshop, it's because our actual overall image is a massive image, almost 5,000 pixels wide, and it's almost 3,300 pixels tall. So what does that mean? Well, if we go back to our Dreamweaver code, we can see that our rectangle is being positioned absolutely. That means it needs to sit in this exact spot with no regard to anything going on around it. And that's 900, almost 1,000 pixels from the left-hand side of the screen and 716 pixels from the top. Position absolute is generally speaking a bad way to go unless you're building your website or your application in a pretty specific way. So we're going to delete both this idea of absolute positioning and our left and top positioning, uh, like uh, the parameters, I guess you could call them. I'm going to get rid of all of that. And now we're just left with the width and the height of our box, a Z index, which we don't need. That's sort of like the layer order. See Z index three and then Z index four for our text, indicating that the text will be on top. You only really need that Z index when you're using, you guessed it, absolute positioning, which 
as you saw a moment ago, we got rid of. Let's try this again. I'm going to save this file. Let's go back to our browser. Whoops, let's go back to the Google Chrome. I'm going to refresh the page. And you can see, sure enough, our button has popped to the top left corner because now it just sits there as if it's almost like a piece of text, sort of. It's not quite the same type of element, but it just sits there. So we've adjusted the text to make it a little bit more feasible. There are a few other things we can do because this is a block level element. We're not going to get into all that. This isn't really technically a CSS tutorial, even though we are delving into the code. Let's talk about adding the follow me text. So here with in our div tags, we're going to add a paragraph. So uh, an opening p tag and a closing p tag. And here within the opening p tag, we're going to add a class. Class equals open and close quotes. And we're going to say follow me, follow underscore me. And that's with a capital F and a capital M. And then we actually need to add the text follow me and then maybe an exclamation point all right let's just save this and we'll jump back over to the browser and let's see what we've got so i'm going to refresh it and nothing appears well because we need to make some additional adjustments here number one let's get rid of our positioning get rid of the left and top positioning and also the z index that's first and foremost let's go ahead and change the text align from justify left to maybe center so we can center it up in our button the line height is going to have to change we'll get to that in a second uh, and let's go ahead and save this. Let's go back to Google Chrome, refresh our page. And hey, look at that. Some text appeared. Now, the reason that it bumped the button away from the top of the window and the reason that the text is all the way at the bottom of the button is because of what I mentioned just a second ago, and that is line height. Let's change line height from 7.3 to just like 3. Let's see what that does. Go ahead and refresh the page. That's a little bit too high. Uh, we'll maybe go 4. Let's see what that does. Go ahead and refresh it, and maybe it's got to be more like 4.25. There we go. And sure enough, we have a button that we've taken from Photoshop. Yes, we had to tweak the code. We can get rid of all this group one junk up here. But we're able to copy this straight from Photoshop. We had to make some adjustments because Photoshop, just, it just gives you dirty code. It just does. There's no other way to put it. It's dirty, not very efficient code at all. We cleaned it up a lot. It's much nicer now. And we have our corresponding HTML that the CSS is styling. Um, now, is this a feasible way to create a website in real life? Something that you would want to do? Well, let's examine for a second the name of this HTML file nope.html it's not a feasible way it's not the way that I would create a website but it is good to know the features there in Photoshop because there may be a time when you're working on a web design project and you absolutely need to quickly in a bind get some CSS to throw together but it's also imperative as you just saw me go through and parse through this code it is imperative that you understand how to go through and filter through your CSS because without knowing how to do that our button would have been way out in the middle of the screen with no text on it and it just would have been a mess it would have just been an absolute mess you can do stuff with the copy CSS function in Photoshop but it's not really nearly the most effective way to work with CSS and Photoshop. It's best to actually go and learn CSS. It's not that scary. It's not that difficult. It can be a lot of fun. Uh, but do know that you do still have the option to right-click on virtually any layer and choose to copy the CSS, especially when we're talking about text and objects. So for copy CSS in Photoshop and the difficulties of getting good, clean code out of Photoshop, well, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds and Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching that video. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to this channel. All the cool kids are doing it. Also, head over to my website and sign up for my newsletter email. You get a great free gift for signing up, and I email all kinds of great stuff, never any spam. So make sure you sign up today. Thanks for watching.